Okay, get our coffee. Let's hit the road. This is an awesome place to camp, but uh, it's time to head to Alaska. Let's go. I'm currently on the Olympic Peninsula right now and we're heading towards Seattle where I'm going to get kind of my last bit of supplies and then we're hitting the Alaska Highway and I've heard the snow is kind of stacking so I'm a little nervous but we have a long road ahead of us. Ouch. That looks like a painful one just found out that if I don't take the ferry across, I'm gonna have to drive about 150 miles down and back up. So it's actually cheaper to pay like 50 or 60 bucks and put my truck camper on the ferry and take the ferry across from the Olympic Peninsula over towards kind of Bellingham area. So that's what we're doing. Left on the State Road 20 East, Washington 20 East. We're rolling into Port Townsend. We're gonna get on the ferry up here. There it is. Hopefully we made it in time. Two o'clock reservation. Oh um, no, I don't. I just oh no. What? Let me give you the reality of standby. Today. Okay. We've been running a storm route all day, which means gotcha. we're holding back a couple car lakes from the bow. Okay. We're barely getting all our reservation, let alone standby. Oh boy, I might be sitting here a while. Oh man, I'm nervous. Hope we can make it on. We'll see. Hello. Hi. Uh, do you have reservation? I don't. I was just gonna try to get on. I didn't know we even needed them. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so you are under 30 feet. Is it just you? Yes, yeah, just myself. Okay, it's 39.10. Right, three that. You're all set there. Awesome, okay. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, have a good day. Yeah, you too. Yeah. And they'll let you know when it's time to go. Okay. Five, three, three. Yes, 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 we made it. Lane two, right here. Sweet, I cannot believe we got on this one. Made it across the ferry on our way to the Canadian border. Bum, bum, bum. I remember when I used to be terrified to drive this truck house 45 miles an hour because I thought the roof was going to rip off. And here we are cruising 72 miles an hour. No problem. A beautiful sunset here in Seattle. Well, guys, my Yakima box broke a couple of the mounts down low. The locking mechanism and the latching and the rivets are broken loose. It takes like 30 minutes to close it and lock it every time. So I just swung by a rack and road here in Seattle and uh, we're throwing their brand new Thule on. It's gonna be sweet. Out with the old and with the new. The new one up there. Old one's history. Thank you guys. Only place in the freaking country that had that in stock. I'll tell you right now, you do not want to buy a rooftop box in Alaska. It's like three times as much. Anyway. Time to go. I'm driving up to just south of Bellingham. It's one of the rest stops. I'm just gonna pull off the highway and sleep there. And we're gonna hit it first thing in the morning. Here's our home for the night. Good old rest area. Home sweet home for the night. Get some heat going. See you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Today is the day we're crossing into Canada, I hope, and heading towards Alaska. Let's go. I don't know why, but ever since I got rejected at the border when COVID was going on, I've been nervous to cross the border because it's totally up to the person that's working behind the counter. They can just turn you right around if they want to. Hopefully we get through today and all goes well. There's only one way to find out though, we're gonna go for it, we're gonna do it. 
We're in Bellingham right now, heading towards the border. In about 30 minutes and we'll be there. Man, the winter's coming, you can just feel it. The highway looks like it's gonna be a little bit nasty going north, so we'll see. We just filled up at Costco right over there. Diesel was uh, about five bucks a gallon. Now we're heading towards the Canadian borderline. That's the last cheap gas. Gas is gonna go up to about eight fifty nine dollars a gallon where I'm going for about 2,000 miles of driving, so it ain't gonna be cheap, but we gotta do it, because we're going home. Got my passport ready to go, and we've arrived. Wish me luck. Good morning. Just south of Anchorage. Up to, yeah, just going home right now, so. Nope, now just the bear spray in there. And then I've got uh, like steak and eggs and uh, I think like some kiwis and uh, milk. Other than that, that's about it. Four and five days, so I'm just passing through. All right. That was the most questions I've ever had at the border. Holy crap. We're in though. <laughs> We got lucky too, there's a lot of people pulled over over there getting searched, so that was the most questions I've ever had. Man, that is a relief to make it through every time. Ugh. Right now we're heading towards Whistler and we're going to take potentially the most dangerous highway in Canada up and over the mountains towards Alaska because it's a shortcut. We're gonna take the Duffy Highway. Last time I did it, last January, it was a total nightmare. Hopefully it'll be a little better this time. The conditions are icy and snowy right now, but it's also supposed to snow tomorrow night, so I've gotta get through it by then. There's a reason Alaska feels like home to me. On an earth littered with all this human development, Alaska feels like my secret hiding spot from the chaos of civilization. The best way to truly understand how far separated Alaska is from the rest of the world is simply by driving the Alaska Highway. The drive from Seattle, Washington to Anchorage, Alaska is right at 2,400 miles, which is just about the same distance as driving from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. And not only that, but imagine driving from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean with only a few cities along the entire drive. As soon as I get past Vancouver, British Columbia, my nerves begin to settle and a calmness falls over my mind. Humans have long controlled the population of everything on Earth and somehow, in the mix of it all, we forget to control the population of ourselves. This becomes apparent when navigating through the sea of humans living amongst all these concrete walls and hardly a living plant in sight. And sometimes I have to wonder, what is all this that we've created? However, I do acknowledge that to live is to consume at any given level. I'm aware that I'm not special and that I'm part of the bigger issue. I drive a large vintage diesel truck thousands of miles filming all these adventures with non-renewable fuel sources. All I know is I'm so grateful to have Alaska to call my home, knowing that I have my safe haven away from all this progression in society, and it's calling me home again.